Hey folks, I'm back with the final conclusion of the report here. Uh, we're on to part C, follow the money. But as we look deeper at these regulations, these rules, these procedures, we begin to see that the only purpose they serve is to create needless expense that burdens our society, yet benefits a particular person or group or company. In other words, rules and regulations become a way for the few to exploit the many with impunity. Take the TSA full body scanners. As I wrote about extensively on my blog, the full body scanners are an unquestionable health hazard, both to passengers and even more so to operators. TSA workers are already beginning to suffer health effects of the full body scanners that they are exposed to uh, all during their working hours. Yeah. They are furthermore extraordinarily expensive, inconvenient, inefficient, and worst of all, they don't work as an a uh, determined-minded terrorist can easily smuggle weapons onto a plane so much as inmates smuggle shanks into pr uh, prison. <coughs> These reasons ought to be more than enough to make the implementation of full body scanners highly suspect. Yet they have been deployed at tremendous expense. Each machine costs over $100,000 in most airports in America. Why? The former head of Homeland Security Agency, uh, Michael Chertoff, is aggressively lobbying for the full body scanners because he is in partnership with the largest manufacturer of full body scanners, RapaScan uh, Systems. Mr. Chertoff uh, pr directly profits from each body scanner installed, which is why he has lobbied Congress and the public so aggressively. He is literally singing for his supper. By the way, this is why I was assigned my very own Homeland Security agent and put on some sort of terrorist watch list for pointing out this unwholesome, not to, not to say immoral, relationship between uh, Chertoff, Rapiscan, and Homeland Security. This is an example of a needless expense that burdens our society as a whole, yet benefits a particular business and a particular person. This is also an example of a lack of regulation. There is no rule that says a former head of a government agency cannot join a private company and lobby that agency. It is illegal in just about every other Western uh, democracy, and I think it's obvious to us all how immoral it is to be lobbying your former employees. Yet, in the United States, what My Michael Chertoff is doing is unregulated and therefore legal. And the bank bailouts of 2008, what essentially happened was banks made bad loans, uh, securitized those bad loans, and then sold them to one another, creating an enormous house of cards, which eventually fell when housing prices began to tank and these loans turned out to be toxic. Everyone in the financial industry knew what was going on, but everyone was getting so much money that they all fed up at the trough for, so long, for as long as they could. The toxic assets based on these dodgy uh, mortgage loans were a ticking time bomb. Everybody knew they would blow up, but everyone lived in the insidious IBG, YBG. I'll be gone, you'll be gone, as in, I'll be gone when this whole charade explodes and you'll be gone too. If you or I did what the banks did, sell crap assets to gullible buyers, which is essentially what Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and all the other too big to fail banks did, we would be arrested on conspiracy and racketeering charges. But that didn't happen to the too big to fail banks. What did happen to them? They got bailed out by the federal government and then they used the bailout money to pay themselves record bonuses. They did exactly what the gangsters in the movie Goodfellas did. They busted out the joint to use the mobster parlance. And what happened to, bank, ba to banker gangsters, those banksters? Nothing. Not a single one of them was arrested or charged with anything, much less went to jail. 
They knowingly bankrupted the nation's financial system, and they got away with it scot-free. D. That's not supposed to be the way we do things. Some people at this point might be reading me and saying, Yo, Gonzo, you are one naive scribbler. The rich and powerful have always gotten away with whatever they've wanted. Maybe elsewhere, but that's not the American way. The American way is not the right of might. It's the opposite. It's the might of right. And one of the key ten tenets of the American way is egalitarianism the equality of everyone be they be they ever so rich or ever so humble before the law it is fair and right and good that if I am not a thief raiding lower middle class homes stealing people's flat screen TVs then I ought to be tried condemned sentenced and punished but it is equal, equally fair and right and good that if I am a thief in an Italian suit raiding the financial institutions that our economy depends on, carrying out practices which I know will lead to my bank needing to be bailed out, then I ought to be tried, condemned, sentenced, and punished. The guy who rips off a $300 flat screen and the guy who rips off a $700 million municipal pension fund are the same. They are thieves and they should be treated the same. They should be punished. And if their punishments are not commensurate with the cost of their crimes, because I think we can all agree that stealing a $300 TV set is a lot less serious than destroying the pensions of thousands of retirees, then at least their punishments ought to be the same. But we don't have this qual qual equality. The thief who made off with a $300 flat screen gets 10 years in jail. The scumbag who bankrupted our municipal pension fund is taking it easy on St. Bart's with a couple of underaged models on a sailboat most of us can only dream about. E. Laws for the lowly. Winks for the mighty. There is, this is not egalitarianism. This is not the American way. This is structural pliancy. The base is immobile and rigid, but the higher you rise, the more pliant the rules. If you're at the bottom, the rules and regs are rigid, but as you rise up, the rules become negotiable, and then finally they stop existing altogether. You can literally do whatever you want. Ask Dick Cheney. Ask Michael Chertoff. Ask the banksters who got bailed out by their good buddy, Hank Paulson and his uh, toadying uh, creepazoid follower, Tim Geithner. Ask the banksters now, the ones embroiled in the mortgage mess of illegal signatures and fraudulent foreclosures. Are they slowly but surely getting themselves the sweetheart deal of the century, a cheapy settlement for all the crimes they committed? And for all those forged documents, all those illegal evictions, evictions of some people who didn't even owe money on the homes that they fully owned. The banksters won't spend a day in jail. They won't pay a single personal fine. Any fines that they will pay will be minuscule and to top it off it'll be our taxpayer money anyways. Money that they got from uh, government bailouts. Money that is ours. That's how it goes if you're at the top end in America. If you're you are <laughs> If you are poor, poor and marginalized, if you get caught smoking dope, shoplifting a candy bar, and then failing to pay your parking tickets, then you could potentially go to jail for 30 years to life. What's known as, as the uh, three strikes rule. Similarly, if you own a small business, say a dozen employees, ecking out razor thin margins, and you fail to carry out any one of literally hundreds of trivial, needless, pointless regulations, rules and regs, as dumb as the 100 milliliter bottle of the TSA, you find yourself bankrupt in short order. As the government regulators come down on you like a sack of bricks, looking to make an example of you and send a message. But if you're a big food processing plant listed on the NICE, your CEO getting his picture taken with the president, then you have no worries. The FDA goon will stop by your headquarters for friendly chat 
and a cup of coffee, and that will be the extent of the government's regulation on your food manufacturing plant. You can sell untested, unsafe, genetically modified food products with impunity. You can carry out monoplastic, monoplastic uh, business practices on family farmers without a care, forcing them to buy your feed and your pesticide at exorbitant usurious markups. You can basically do whatever you want. Is this fair? Is this the American way? No, it is not. It most definitely is not. But it is the way things are now. F. Beware of Greeks bearing gifts. So these people who play with impunity, the beneficiaries of structural pliancy, are precisely the ones making the loudest noises about ending all this red tape regulation. They sound like our friends. After all, we common folk want to live in a land with fewer pointless rules, fewer stupid regulations, fewer atrocities like the 100 milliliter rule. But don't be fooled. These people who claim they want to end the regulations don't want to help us. They want to exploit us. By ending the few regulations still controlling their behavior, these people want to be able to more fully exploit average Americans. They want to be free to rape us even though even more thoroughly than they already do. And in conclusion, this is why I believe we do not need more or less regulations. What we need are appropriate rules and regulations that are applied, that are applied across the board equally. America is a nation founded on the notion of equality of opportunity, but also of equality before the law. The richest and the poorest, the most humble and the most high-flying simply must be treated with equality. Equality is their opportunities their, and equality in their sanctions. We have to draw the line. We have to discern. We have to end the structural pliancy that is corrupting our great republic. If we truly believe that a crime is a crime is a crime, regardless of the perpetrator, then we have to investigate, charge, prosecute, and punish those who have most destroyed the shining promise of our great nation. We have to regulate these high-flying miscreants. We have to free the common people such as you and I from the regulations that these evil people have imposed on us for their own selfish gains. In short, we have to return to the single great quality that defends America, equality before the law. That's all I got for now, folks. Think about it. Peace out.